<clears throat> okay. Um, let's see. Let's go to our first one. So view the November 29th meeting minutes. Do I hear a motion to approve the meeting minutes from November 29th? And then we can open it for edits or such. I, I move that we approve the minutes <laughs> and, I, and I have some heads. <laughs> okay, I so, um, okay. Um, I'll second that because Rita isn't with us tonight. Uh, go ahead, Eric, what are your edits for the 29th? Well, you know, if I could find them, we'd be way ahead here. Because uh, I- you know, I do miss the paper packets sometimes. <laughs> I know. You know, it's nice to be in the paperless society. Yeah, but uh, it has its ups and downs. Here we go. Um, so in the minutes, if you go to page three, it's just confusing to me where um, it says at 604 Stalker moves and Farrell seconds, blah, blah, blah. And then down about two paragraphs below, it says Stalker moves and Farrell seconds. And they're both, I, as far as I can tell, they're both um, motions to close the annual tax classification hearing. So is that just a typo kind of thing or what? something's confusing to me there? Um, I think it it definitely could be. We were, I was we were trying to cut make them shorter, so um, somehow we duplicated that section in that process. It looks like sort of a cut and paste error or something. <laughs> yeah. And, and then I'm, also, I'm, okay. No, you go, you go, you got your on list. on page four. Um, it says all those in favor of signifying support for the FinCom's concoms request, blah blah, blah. and it never says what the vote was or anything, I don't think it does. Anyway, it, it's confusing to me because it just doesn't, just it's confusing me right there. I think that, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I think all were in favor. It's just how you read it. And she didn't have to record the vote. It wasn't our meeting that voted. It wasn't the select board that voted. Oh, okay. So, um, right. Right. So how could we say that so it's a little less confusing? Because it sort of confuses that to me, gets confused with about three sentences later where it says, Starker moves in feral seconds. It's like, I can't quite tell what we're voting on here. Um, we'll take that under advisement and bring it back. Okay. Well, Becky, one thing I, I didn't attend this meeting, so I don't know if we can approve these minutes because I have to abstain. That's true. Mm -hmm. I don't uh -huh. think we can. Good point. So um, we have another round of this one, Eric. <laughs> Good. <laughs> For the next one. <laughs> nice. <laughs> <laughs> well, we can fix them up and try again next time. That's, That's fine. Right. Yeah, I just happened to, I'm like, I don't remember. I May mean, I read through them? I'm like, I don't remember this, but you know. No, yeah, you'll notice your name, your name does not appear there. Then I went yeah. to the top and I realized just now I read through them earlier. I'm like, oh, I don't remember this, but that's okay. And then I'm like, wait a minute. So yeah. I didn't right. attend this one. <clears throat> so we'll have okay. to push it to the next one. Sorry about that. All righty. Um, so I guess the motion just dies on the floor. We won't vote on that one. Yeah, we'll just take all these minutes up next time around. Yep. Right. Um, the next is to meet with the Historical Commission at 545. We're a few minutes ahead of time. Becky, is there anything that can pop in in four minutes? Um, let's see. Most of my... I can give a bit of an update on PBTA. Okay. And FRTA. Okay. Um, so this is the, the ongoing saga of um, exploring uh, transportation um, potential opportunities for Shootsbury. Um, this request was initially brought forward through the Council on Aging from <clears throat> First from some members of village neighbors and then um, and then through the Council on Aging, um, wanting to know if there can be either um, 
on call access to um, either medical or <laughs> other um, transport needs in the Amherst area. So for uh, Shootsbury's history, we've always only been a member of FRTA, Franklin Regional uh, Transportation mm -hmm. Authority. Our, we have not um, ever established significant enough numbers to develop a fixed route into Shootsbury over the last few attempts, um, the latest being in 2016. So FRTA has been very gracious in saying they want to help us uh, have transportation into Amherst, but it's going to cost them more to transport um, our folks into Amherst than it would if we worked with PVTA, who's already uh, services Amherst. So we are in this unique situation of exploring um, a membership with PVTA. And PVTA um, is gone back, they have not added a new member in, um, in a, I think a couple of decades. So they are verifying uh, what process that would have to take. It would include first a vote of, uh, I believe town meet, well, a vote of the select board, potentially town meeting, that's the issue at point that don't know for sure whether we need a vote of town meeting, um, but, so they're trying to uh, determine that. If it's just the select board, the select board would um, gather up uh, data to support whatever services that we are requesting of PVTA and then lobby PT, uh, PVTA uh, to become a member of PVTA. Um, and it turns out that this has only become possible in the last um, few years. Um, Steve Kulik, before he left uh, the legislature, had supported a bill that would allow a small town like either Leverett or Shootsbury that are on the border of two regions, transportation mm -hmm. regions, um, to join both of them to try to optimize uh, services and, and in the end um, have affordable transportation services. So the task at hand is to, is to number one, figure out um, how to become a member of PVTA. And at the same time, we need to work with them and work with FRTA to determine what services the town would want. So it means we would have to initiate a survey of some sort um, for both um, to lobby both agencies, but primarily PVTA since um, they should um, be the cheapest and most affordable and most um, and have the most services for our town. So that's what we're sorting out. What I'm in the midst of is, um, Figuring all that out, uh, FRTA's uh, transportation director and, and assistant met with me this week. Um, we feel like we're starting to get somewhere in framing, and the next step will be in framing our needs. So we'll have to go back to the Council on Aging and see uh, if we can get them to support the survey that we're going to write that will have to be townwide. Okay. Okay, um, Eric, do you mind? Do, are you okay if we take a question? I see one hand raised. Yeah, I'm okay. Go ahead, Mary Lou. <clears throat> Hi, Mary Lou Conca. Um, I just had a question for the select board. I had sent you an email. Um, perhaps if you don't have the answer, you could direct me to where I could find it. And this was in can, reference we to... You, we can answer you, Mary Lou, by email. So we can answer okay. you there. If, if, does it, if it doesn't fit with the FERTA or the PVTA, we'll have to push it. Oh, I see. Um, okay. Very good. Thank you. Thank you, Melissa. You're welcome. Um, 
thank you, Becky. We're now we're now at five forty five. Uh, meeting with the historical Henry, commission yeah. the yeah. board. Yeah. Henry, yep, I see Henry. Um, are you Henry going to be the spokesperson, or any other of the historical commission going to help walk us through this? Okay, go ahead, yes. Getty. Uh, Henry. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, you all got to see the update, I presume. Yes. Yes. Uh, and, yep. uh, so we have. Uh, was that a yes or? Yes. Yes. Okay. So um, we have a few questions for you uh, uh, there, but most recently we had a discussion with Peter Ham, the expert in preservation of uh, historical artifacts, and Peter Ham uh, actually. Uh, mentioned that a straight out uh, restoration is certainly viable here. When we met with him the first time around, uh, we, we he, he focused more on the idea of having a replica uh, and uh, putting the existing guide board into some kind of controlled climate uh, environment indoors. Uh, but since then, he has mentioned that uh, straight out restoration is a viable option. And uh, besides that, uh, there could be added protection, uh, some kind of canopy. Uh, 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 Miriam refers to a pergola. First time I'd ever heard of the thing. Uh, but but there, there are a variety of options here to keep the, you know, the, the, the elements away. Um, Pergolas are not particularly uh, impervious to the uh, weather, uh, but uh, let's say some some semblance of a of a um, uh, what is it called now a, uh, a gazebo is certainly much more protective of, of that uh, of, of the structure. Uh, with restoration, um, what would happen? Uh, we'd we'd likely uh, do a paint analysis which was mentioned by Miriam in, in notes of the update. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and, and that you know, goes to a, a, a specialist at a lab in Boston, uh, just to make sure that uh, there's no uh, uh, problematic interaction among, among the, 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 the uh, elements uh, uh, that compose the structure uh, and, and all of the modifications that have been done uh, over the years. Um, so, so again, restoration is an option uh, that we could pursue and, and uh, let me see, did I forget anything? Um, yeah, I think that, that, that was pretty much it. Um, a bit of a paint analysis, which would be certainly uh, a, a good thing to do. Uh, how long would it last? Uh, a well restored guide board would last 50 years. So it's it's worth the investment, you know, 50 years is fair fair amount of time down the road. Um that's with the pergola or or not. I'm just curious. Uh, the pergola uh, they run about three thousand dollars. No, but I mean that 50 year figure is that assuming it's covered or assuming it isn't covered? assuming it's covered, yeah. Okay. We did not include that in the original uh, application uh, for the uh, part. Part of the thing is that uh, the the uh, the roofing, if if you want to call it, the the the, 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 the piece that protects it on top is actually uh, made of lead, uh, and uh, I guess uh, the thought is that uh, this is not a particularly uh, well. Lead is toxic. People will be touching it, whatever. Uh, outside, so it, it might be worthwhile replacing that with something. And a protective cover uh, would keep the elements uh, from e eroding it. And <clears throat> the questions you have uh, that the Historical Commission, I, I'm sorry, I jumped off of it, um, were, one second. I just want to go back to. I actually have those. Actually, oh yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Uh, so I can read them out. 
Yes. Uh, uh, again, okay, so I just gave you a, a, <clears throat> even more of an update here. We have a restoration possibility, um, <laughs> which is what we originally intended. But here, here are the questions that uh, Miriam uh, jotted down. Uh, one, does the town have an interest in seeing an effort to restore slash repair the guide board as originally planned with an assessment of the materials? Again, this is a question of uh, uh, doing a, 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 a lab analysis of uh, the paint uh, and the materials, the wood, the, the whatever was used to modify it, uh, you know, uh, uh, adhesives, et cetera, to preserve it over the years. That's question number one. So, um, Eric, do you want do you want to take these individually? Sure. Maybe? Yeah. Sure. Um, okay. Uh, <laughs> I guess. Uh, as much as anything, I'm interested. I mean, what do you want to do? What, what is what are you what are you coming to us asking to okay. do? I, I don't I don't feel like it's fair for us to have to make the decision well, the, about what to do. You know no, what I mean? Yeah. No. No. Understandably. Yeah. They, 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 I mean, what, what are you, you advocating? Trying? Well, we 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 are presenting different options. Uh, um, uh, I I my sense is that um, my sense, of course, the commission sense is that. At this point, we could do a pres a, a restoration. Uh, number the question number one, right? It's a restoration with a paint analysis. I think that that is probably the most viable option here, um, and financially, uh, you know, cost wise, it, it's the best option uh, because the replica, you know, would it, it, that would cost us in the vicinity of uh, you know, thirteen fifteen thousand dollars. Um, uh, and then, and we then have to deal with the original, uh, keeping it indoors, make sure it doesn't, uh, right. Um, it, we could use, uh, I suppose we could use the, uh, CPC monies, uh, historical commission monies to restore the original anyway, but we wouldn't have the $15,000 to make the replica. Uh, and, and so the, the, the restoration option, which is question number one, is probably the, uh, you know, cost-wise, uh, you know, the, the best option. And, and, and we've been informed again by an expert, uh, this is a last minute update, that this would, would uh, with the paint analysis, uh, with proper uh, restoration, um, this would run, you know, th this would last for 50 years. Do we know what that would cost? Um, How are we comparing the prices between the two? That's all. Yeah. Well, yeah, th this again, uh, we did not get a, 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 a firm uh, estimate from uh, Peter Ham. We, we have available $15,000. Um, I believe that was one of the estimates that we got um, originally from these folks, Peter Ham and uh, Mary Lou, uh, what is her name? Mary Lou Davis. Thank you. Mary Lou Davis, yeah. That, that's right. Um, so it would be in, the, in that vicinity. We, we would have the funds to do that. I, had, I think the paint analysis was uh, outside of the, that estimate. In other words, it goes beyond the estimate. Well, one thing I know about the paint analysis, I believe Jim Aaron and Bob Groves did the last repairs in that. Mm -hmm. I assume that meant painting. They could probably at least tell you what they did to it. I mean, they, I would think, I would think. Uh, yeah, L let me just uh, uh, point out, uh, this, uh, this paint analysis is, um, uh, it, it's a routine kind of thing when you're trying to preserve artifacts of this nature. Uh, you have to know what the wood is in, what wood is involved, what has been done to it over the years, what sort of adhesives have been used on it, what sort of paint has been used on it. All that has to be analyzed uh, in, in order to make sure you have the right combinations. Otherwise, uh, there will be uh, premature uh, erosion and decay, degeneration. That, that, at least that's what I was informed by the experts 
Peter Hamm, who is uh, who's done uh, the Emily Dickinson's house, uh, you, know, you know, the list is long, but they know uh, uh, precisely what to do with the, in these cases. So it's, it's not something that just anybody can do. It's got to go to a lab to be done. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay. Um, I think my, fe my feeling is I think that we at least are at the restart you know, restore repair level. Um, I think that the replica has quite a high price tag. Um, yeah, the replica doesn't do you know, anything for me either. It's it's kind of, no. a, it's a replica. <laughs> you right, know, it's not right. the, you know. Yeah, the, the idea of the replica was that, uh, it, you know, you'd have something out there to withstand the elements and, and you could preserve the right. original somehow inside. You know. But, uh, However, this particular one has made it 186 years. <laughs> I know it's point. needed repair over the years, but it has still yeah, weathered it, quite it, a bit it, of it, weather it, itself. Yeah, it, it actually is in, in fairly precarious state at the moment. Um, that's why we're doing this. Yeah. And, and I'm not and, sure about a pergola over it. Would that block traffic view from the corner? Yeah, well, you know, those are the things that go through my thought processes. You know, I under I understand the reason for the pergola, yeah. um, or the, or the, um, you know, the roof over it. Um, yeah. And you were Becky was was she looking for a vote tonight? Yes. No. I see some hands. So I'll call on people. Yes, I I think they. I assume I assume Miriam was looking for a vote, but. I think part of the the problem is having this late information. It changes the picture dramatically, and I don't know if the historical commission has had an opportunity to discuss this part of you know the new update. And I think I was my question is: Can I ask my question, Melissa? For Henry? Yeah, go ahead, and then we can have others speak if we'd like to. I was just going to ask Henry. Um, I know a replication cannot be paid for with CPC funds, right. um, so I was wondering uh, why the experts switch from a replication to restoration. Because I was kind of assuming. I thought he said that restoration was inadvisable. Yeah. Uh, so we I'm did. I'm confused by the change. We did too. Uh, we he made they made a compelling case, but. Uh, uh, I guess there was a miss. We didn't, you know, the conversation didn't go there. Um, and uh, Miriam followed back, went back and talked uh, with him. And, uh, you know, he said that it, it's certainly possible to do a restoration. Again, it, it would need to be protected from the elements. The 50 year figure there presumes protection, it can't be left outside to water, et cetera. Uh, damage. Eric, are you okay if we take some questions from? Yeah, yeah, please. Story? Yeah, please. Yeah. Uh, Janice, I saw yours first. Hi, thank you. Um, so I'm a historical commission member as well, and I just wanted to. Um, at one point, we we're asking about the the cost and some of the many pieces of paper that we have on this um, that I've been reading over tonight. Um, one of the things was that um, Peter Ham estimated it would cost about five thousand dollars for his work on restoring the the wooden structure and the roof, and it would probably cost about six thousand to redo the lettering, which would be taking off the lettering, which really needs to be done, and then to repaint in a um, similar lettering style. But some of that may be helped by the paint analysis too, but just to provide that little bit of a break breakdown that we're looking at about 5,000 for the restoration, 6,000 for the lettering, and then they figured less than a thousand for supplies. That's what I had in my notes at any rate. Thank you. Thank you, Janice. Um, Leslie. Thank you. I attended the last historical commission meeting and I did get one piece of email today that I've read through. I'm not understanding what this item that nobody can 
uh, pronounce is, is it going to detract from the historical nature of the, the item itself and of the town common generally? Is it, is it a pavilion or some sort of thing like that? Or is it a kind of paint covering on the um, guide board itself? And then my second question is, in procurement, wouldn't one um, state some of the items that we want and then put that out to many people to bid on and we might get a lesser number? than the, the numbers we're getting from Peter Ham. So th there's two questions. Okay, uh, may I respond then? Yes, uh, go ahead, Henry. Uh, yeah, yeah the, the, I was uh, thrown by Pergola. I, I frankly had never heard of it, but uh, a Pergola is a uh, very simple structure um, that, uh, typically has more or less a, a, a rectangular shape. It's a roofing of rectangular sh uh, shape that overhang, over, overhangs a particular site. Um, and you may have seen them. They, they, they're usually used to, uh, to have uh, all kinds of vines and, and, and plants that rise up and, and form lattices uh, outdoors. Um, this is just a, a, one example of what might be put there as a, as a way of protecting it. I mentioned gazebo. That the only problem with that is that it, it would not be as visible, which it, you know, it's very visible now. <laughs> but if you put a gazebo around it, it's, you'd have to go you know, close and inside the gazebo to see, to see it. But that's the most protective way to, 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 to keep the, the, the guide board. Uh, the second question, as for um, uh, taking bids, uh, my understanding uh, could, uh, I don't know if Janice is still here. Yeah, uh, I, I, I believe, uh, you know, uh, uh, Miriam had gone uh, to various, uh, 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 we, we gotten various uh, prices. Um, and also the idea here is that these people are particular, their expertise is, is, is quite, um, uh, uh, they have a lot of experience uh, doing this kind of thing. Um, it, it, we could have gone just locally, right, to get somebody who's done it before and paint it, but the point was that, that we would find somebody with expertise and, and that's what, um, well, um, that came up with Peter, Peter Hound. So my follow-up question maybe is to Becky, do we not, does one not need to go out to bid for something like this? Are we okay to just find the expert and go with it? I think, um, I think you would, it depends on the cost of the work. So I think at this point it used to be at $10,000 and I think it's moved to $25,000 threshold for three, you know, you can verbally get Oh, you, you need to solicit three bids, um, and this, and that's the compilation. That would be all of the pieces together. And if they're under twenty five thousand, uh, you don't have to do a formal bid. Thank you, um, Mary Lou. One more, and then um, Eric and I'll continue our discussion. Okay. Hi. Um, I agree with what Eric was saying to maybe speak to. Um, oh, Mark Foster's there. Oh, John Lawless, you're you're speaking. I think. I <laughs> okay. <It's all> <laughs> to, to, <laughs> to maybe speak with um, the local experts and um, in particular Bob Groves to perhaps I'm not sure if the historical commission has consulted with him um, since he has done it before in the past, it, you know, it might be a really um, good idea to, to use our local experts. Thank you. Thank you, Mary Lou. Um, Eric, are you ready to make yeah. a motion or discussion? Yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. Uh, I'm not sure. Well, let's discussion first, I guess. But I mean, my sense is that 
personally, it should it should not be a replica. It should be repaired. One question I would have is, let's say there's no pergola. It means 50 years with a pergola. Do we have an estimate of what it would last without a pergola? I mean, as Alyssa has pointed out, Melissa pointed out, I mean, it's 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 been there 180 years or whatever without a pergola. Yep. So that's I assume it must last some amount of time without a pergola, if not a yep. week. Um, Do we know I, that? I got you know what I have in my notes is that it would last 10 to 15 years. That's Peter Ham's assessment. My sense is it's lasted that anyway, just by Bob and Jim or whoever doing it before. And then maybe I'm just misremembering history here, but yep. I think even with a, you know, not a paint analysis and all the things we've spoken of, letter relettering and all that kind of thing, I believe it's it's lasted that anyway. Yeah, that that figure I, I cannot confirm. I you know I would have to confirm that figure, uh, but that's what I have in my notes. I it. Um, you know, it's a pity uh, uh, Miriam could not be here because she's been on on the front line with this. Um, that she has her other obligations tonight. Um, uh, may, may I suggest that uh, we uh, we have the historic commission uh, regroup and revisit this, uh, perhaps with some of the questions you've just ha posed here. Uh, and we could come back and discuss this one more time, which has a, as a final. Uh, yeah, I think that's a good idea. I mean, my you, sense is I would I would love it if the historical commission said we've reviewed the options. Here's what we suggest, <laughs> and and then yeah, yeah. We, we're not trying to figure out. We're not trying to look at 15 different things. And if there's a pergola and if it has vines on it and whatever we're trying to do here. It yeah, just so seems they, to yeah. me that it'd be really good to have a very solid recommendation from the people who have done the research to get to get the answer to the question. Sure. Yeah, and I do agree with Eric on that. But uh, Leslie, were you going to fill in that that piece for for um, Henry about the time when it was left when it was done the last time? How long it's been? No, you had your uh, hand raised. Yeah, I know, and that wasn't exactly why I raised it. Okay. Uh, go ahead. You, I'll take your comment, and then I think we're sending it back to the historical commission, as Henry suggested. Yeah, I think that's a an excellent idea, and I thank the select board for doing it because what I understood at the last meeting, and I'm not a member as such a voting member, but I thought they were just coming to you tonight to inform you of the progress that was going on, not to get a approval vote. And mm -hmm. I don't understand the mechanics of it all, but. I wonder what the public, and this may be a question for historical commission. I wonder what the public response would be to a pavilion or gazebo or anything uh, changing it. Uh, it's been, it was stated at the historical commission meeting that this has been probably re been reworked and reworked over and over again over the years and probably is not nearly how it originally looked. And, probably not nearly meant much of it is original at this point. So what are we trying to preserve for 50 years with the object that's going to make our time common maybe look less colonial than it does and maybe nobody cares, but I think that the people who drive by it every day might be very surprised to see it hidden away, but I'll bring that up at the historical commission meeting instead. Okay, thank you. They'll want to know how to get to Ripton. That's what it says on the <laughs> side. <I'm> sorry. <laughs> anyway. I know, right? All right. Yeah. So moving on, um, the next thing on the agenda is the um, work, the work site safety, if I have it right, the work site safety policy that was drafted. Um, it's a first draft. So, um, Becky, I'm going to share this. So if you could watch the waiting room, if that's okay. Becky? All right. I think I'll just share it. <laughs> okay, bye. All right. What can everybody see? Can they see my mouse moving over here? Because I have two yeah. screens. Okay. Yeah, you're looking good. All right. 
Um, let me just make this so I can see everybody on this screen. Give me one second. Technology sometimes needs a little help. Moving on. Okay. There we go. I think I got everybody. Um, so uh, out of a discussion that the select board had a couple of meetings ago, um, was uh, I was tasked with writing up a draft of a work site policy for lot 032 as we're heading into what I think we can be considered as pre-construction um, phase at the moment, uh, maybe even pre-pre-construction, but um, we'll have many, many phases of this project and probably many iterations of this and other um, site policies, I can imagine. So this was kind of a rough draft. I know the select board saw it. Um, Becky, I don't know if Rita gave any input. Um, Mary oh, she was, yeah, she felt that you, you were definitely going in the right direction. She was very okay. positive. Yeah, so this is just kind of a, a one thing. I I don't know if you want me to go run through it real quick. Um, so maybe I'll just run through it. We'll just go through it. Um, so uh, what I had just said is that I think we're at the, we're at the point of the new library project where we're now considered the very early stages of pre-construction. Um, and so we want to acknowledge the public's desire to observe the ongoings on that location, but also we must um, make sure everybody is safe and feel safe um, in, in doing that. So um, when a contractor, town employee, or, or committee, organization, agency, et cetera, I think I caught most of those, um, are working on the location uh, for their business, they'd be considered a work zone. And so the guidelines that that seem to make sense, but um, like I said, this is certainly a rough draft, is that it would be deemed a work zone and a work zone sign would be placed in direct views from the road so that anyone approaching can see that there's active work going on. Um, and then if that work zone sign is up, the following um, are the things we should uh, think about abiding by. So at the start of a work zone event, and there will be a person nominated, assigned, volunteer, someone to serve as a point person. Uh, that person will coordinate with those on site performing the professional work and tasks, committee work, whatever that is at the moment. Um, and they'll be the point person to help the public also observing that day. Um, the observing, there'll be a observation location set up and that'll be determined by the site person, a contractor, town employee, depending on what work is going on there. Um, it should allow for the public to observe, but it should also allow for the people to work um, uninterrupted and as proficiently as possible. Um, when there's actual machines involved, the machine operator is the one that will determine the safety zone and they will around the equipment and work area. That person has and Eric, let me know if this feels good to you, has the select board approval to stop work at any point if any safety, if the safety zone is, is um, impeded on, because that can create a very dangerous situation. Um, so that person has soul, would have the ability to stop work and make sure everything goes back and not start again until things were deemed safe. Um, so while people are performing tasks, they're, this one's a little strongly worded, but I think, um, I think it's necessary, unfortunately, um, that there needs to be the respect of people's personal space, arguing, shouting, distracting behavior can all cause dangerous situations and won't be allowed when there's a work zone set up. And individuals who participate in this will be asked to leave the property and the point person uh, would be the person to determine if that has gotten out of hand and um, will decide uh, being the person on the ground. Um, so this policy uh, will remain fluid because it's going to be ongoing and there'll be many more iterations. Um, later changes will have to be made as we get closer. OSHA standards will take over training and other uh, things will have to happen um, to determine who's authorized to enter the active construction zone. So the so that's kind of the basis of this. Eric, do you have any comments? Uh, Questions, yeah, the... edits, feel free. 
the 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 um the well the thing I would wonder about is is numbers numbers two and three. I think it's all very good generally. Um, uh -huh. no, I mean, I think it it clearly the purpose is to keep people safe and to mm -hmm. let people who want to observe things observe them. That's no one's trying to stop that from happening. I don't. You think said two and three. Yeah. Yeah, no, this is all three. to allow both to happen and coincide with each other, but still be right. able to be. No, I know that, but I'm just saying, I'm just wondering about the site person, like a person will be nominated, assigned, volunteer. What if three people nominate? You know I mean? I mean it's, it seems, I'm not quite sure that I could just set that. I didn't know what, I didn't know what to call it because I, you know, it can right. be at any point. I didn't know what to call it, but I didn't want thinking of, of you know, where things that I do in my now in my professional life, I mean, change jobs. There's always a like a, a superintendent or a site person that kind of co coordinates things, right? And so can right. make sure that the, you know. So that was just a way of doing it. So oh, it no, covered. I I think that's a good idea. My only my only question is, what if three people uh, volunteer to be the site person? No, the site not person. Not a volunteer. Um, what what if I think there should just maybe one and they take turns over the course of the project <laughs> you know i don't i don't know, I don't know. Just, it just seems a little it end. seems a little dicey to me that's all okay and the second okay. thing i would just say is i would just the number three i would just stop it right on the and their observation location distance will be determined by the site person period not not the contractor town employee all that other stuff okay. the okay. site person's the boss unless as you're suggesting the equipment operator is the boss um which well, I think yeah there's machines make, involved it has to makes be sense equipment. that's what i would that's what i would say okay um one thought i had and i'm not, i'm not necessarily advocating it maybe uh kristen could weigh in and this is whether or not mm -hmm. i mean whether or not the nom the, the the person who's the site person should be a police officer just because that's a, a third party a referee if you will uh you know a third someone who's not doesn't have a a dog in the fight, as they say, or you know, whatever it is. Um, I don't know if that makes sense or not. I throw that out there just as an idea. I'm not necessarily advocating it. Maybe what I meant here actually was that they could determine whether whether or not services are needed okay. from. I found this on the web. You know thing? Referee, if you will third someone, it's not a dog in the fight. Right. If they say whatever it is, I have that makes sense. I'm sorry, my yeah. computer's talking up there. I think we are going to have a clerk of the works on site. So okay. if a clerk of the works is on site, then they could be the most natural person to fill that. Oh yeah, well, yeah. that's definitely true. That's like, that's the point I'm trying to make. Yeah. yeah Alyssa, can I weigh in here? Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. <clears throat> when so I'm gonna I'm gonna speak from a, like a police standpoint. When police are going through go training, um, and we're in a training atmosphere, anyone is allowed to call a uh a stop of whatever training is happening or whatever we are doing and that's because not one person can always have eyes on the entire situation i think to put one person in charge of stopping um would um maybe not benefit the entire project i think anybody at any time if they see anything that's unsafe should be able to speak up and say stop now i see something that's unsafe then it can be determined by the person who's quote in charge of that particular project on site to then decide, you know, okay, what did you see? Is this worth stopping? Can we move forward? And then is this anything that we need to call, you know, any emergency services for mm -hmm. or anything like that? Um, and Eric, to speak to your question, should a police officer be involved? Well, we'd be very happy to, but we would have to follow contractual guidelines. And that if a police officer is needed for a project, we might have to look into um, paying them a detail rate. Um, that being said, we would always be available to respond if there was any sort of, um, you know, disorderly conduct or, you know, breaching of the peace or just a needing of keeping the peace. You know, um, sometimes we come in and we're able to sort of you know, uh, separate and, and sort of get everybody in a better understanding. So that's all I wanted to say. I'll add that in there, Kristen, with anybody can call on safe. Anything else, Eric, before we move on to comments or Becky, anything you have? 
No, the only thought I had there is it not just anyone, but anyone that's uh, working on the work site. You know, I don't think somebody walking their dog down the road should, you know, wouldn't be included in that grouping. Yeah, that's a probably good idea. How would we re how would we word that then? Um, that workers could notify the clerk of the works um, or their of any unsafe conditions that they see. Workers should notify the clerk of works or their soup their own supervisor who could notify the clerk of the works. I think there needs to be also the opportunity to, to just to yell out stop and everything just stops in case it's a immediate you know, need. Yeah, uh, no yeah, immediate need. Yep, that makes sense. So are we saying that we can replace the, the, the notion of a a a point person with the with the term clerk of the works? Can we just do that? And so going to that nominated business, can we just say it's the clerk of the works is I was trying well, to stay with open meeting law. <laughs> all right. You know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, you did a good job there. Um, I mean, we'll do we we won't have a clerk of the works until we're actually building something, right? Am I right about that? Right. Uh, but you would you don't you won't have a work zone until you're building something. No, technically anytime there's um, so, so we're th so this is actually this would fit for any testing or anything else. Anytime there's work being done there, it's kind of a loose to, right. And then the next stage would be the more deeper construction phase, right? And so that that has there's there's so many more other uh, standards and such. And then you get all the way into active construction, and then then OSHA takes over, and OSHA sets a lot of the standards and policies of who and what training and all of that that can be around. Um, and safety equipment and all of that. So um, that's deep construction. Could we just say the person in charge of the of the work, the person in, instead of nominated, assigned, and volunteer, say a person who is in charge of the work during will serve as the site point person because there's usually somebody in charge. I mean, like when Tim was there with the crew. Um, he was doing his part, but then you had the the LSP, and then you had a town, you know, the town component, or you could just say a person. Um, yeah, I would say the person in charge, and then that could be determined at so each new scene. Who who would that person have been in the in the in the um, in the scenario you've just given us there? Tim's there, the LSBs, all the people. Who's the person in charge? Well, Tim is operating the heavy, I mean, his crew is involved in doing most of the work. And uh, so it could, you could, and they could decide between themselves. I think we need to keep it general so the decision can be made there. It's either um, Marianne is the town representative, or it's um, the you know whoever is operating the machinery, in charge of the machines. Okay, I think that's Becky. That's where I had had the nominate assigned and volunteer. I you know kind yeah. of to grab them, but we you know. Um, How about we just say a town representative? What a person will serve. Yeah. Yeah. Well, or, yeah. Okay. 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 And I'll work in those other suggestions too, in, into two and three. And then we can come back with draft two on that. Um, and I guess can I throw in one suggestion? Sure, go so, ahead, Marianne. You're okay. the one that's been uh, on the website okay. the most. Um, so can you scroll, can you scroll it down so I can see the top? Because it's um, it was the oh, title, sorry. okay. Yeah. So so could it be a draft work? Could it be a work site policy for town properties? So that way, if ever we're building something somewhere else and similar issues come up, the same policy can be employed. Great. That's a good idea. Yeah. 
Okay, town policies. I'll do it now. Hold on. All right, thank you. Excuse my spelling. I'll fix that. <laughs> um, all right. Anything else? Oh my goodness gracious. Um, anything else with the other ones down below? This this here was just more of a warning as we move on. You know, we'll have deeper, deeper policies. Um, Eric, are you Kristen? Did you have anything else? I don't want to. I don't want to cut you off. And. Uh, nope, I think um, I'm good. Might want to just sit and kind of look at it a little bit more and um, yep. just make sure that we're all in good um, legal standing. But for right now, I'm good. Okay. okay. Um, Eric, do you want to, uh, are you okay with taking comments from the public? Absolutely. Yeah, if, if you mm -hmm. are. Uh, Marion, you still have your hand up. Did you have something else too? Okay, you're good. Okay. Um, Janice and then Mary Lou. Hi. Um, so I just had a, a quick comment. It doesn't have to be incorporated into this, but just okay. for, people are probably aware, but um, that the Conservation Commission always has the right to enter a property to observe the work going on. It falls under the order of conditions and stuff. And the usual okay. procedure is that they'll come on site, they should wear a hard hat and contact whoever, like the clerk of the court, or the clerk of the works on site and let them know that they're there. And then the clerk can tell them if you got to stay out of this area or you know something like that. But you may contact with whoever's in charge on the site, but they are allowed to go on to, to observe the work if they um, they want to. Oh, that's, that's thank you. Yep. Thank you, Jen. Um, Mary Lou. Okay, so I have a couple of few questions. Um, there's a lot of new terms um, being said here this evening that I'm not familiar with, like clerk of the works. Um, but at any rate, I, I think it boiled down to the, what you would be calling it is a town representative. So my question then goes to who appoints this particular um, town representative. And then I heard Becky say she came in while you and Eric were discussing and she shook her head and said, not a volunteer. So by saying that, then, you know, one um, would think that this is going to be a paid position. And um, the third question, I guess, what kind of training will this town representative receive? Yeah, <laughs> thank you. All right, so let me, let me try to answer a couple of questions, Mary Lou. The first yeah. one you had was um, the first one you had was go back to the first. The, the clerk of the clerk of the works is kind of like a, a supervisor or just a point person or or such of of a project. That's kind of a general sum of it. Um, right. uh, so unless there's a more municipal municipal definition. The second question you had was not a volunteer. I think I think it was uh Becky jump in on this if you want, but I think it was to make sure that it was person with a committee or organization or something, not just someone volunteering to be the point person. Well I think was that um, the clerk of the works actually represents the town um as uh independent from the contractor. So um the clerk of the works is going to be hired by the owner's project manager, and uh, who is also a representative. You know, represents the town on the work site. Um, so I was thinking, whoever else, you know, that some when you have a situation, it's it's where you've hired people to do work, even if it's you know, in the latest round, it was environmental testing. But sometimes it's, you know, prior to full construction, it, you would want to make sure that it was somebody who represented the town and um, the person who would be uh, representing the town at that um, point of the project. The last point, um, it was Marianne was representing the town as well as Tim 
for the highway department. So it would be one of those two people because you don't want to add work to other people's job descriptions because it might not be in their contracts. We need to make sure that this mm. is, we're not paying extra for this work, that it's already somebody who is responsible to be there and that we can make sure um, we're not placing an extra burden on our contractors and increasing mm -hmm. our pricing. Thank, Thank you, Becky. Becky. I think, I'm, I I'm think sorry. That also, goes, uh, that also goes, I'm just going to speak a little bit to Becky's point, is I think that goes for the next phase that wouldn't be covered under this particular one. That's going to the next step once you have the, the building um, stuff start in the then the I'm going to say construction manager, but that's not what it's called with the library. I forget project manager. Owner's What's project it? manager. Right. Owner's project manager. So at that point, um, they'll have their own policies too for okay. observing it and public being there too. So this is just kind of get us to that point, you know, while they're doing some of the um, offhanded or one-offs and sort as we get there. Um, Mary Lou, you had a third question. Yes. Um... Okay, so it's just actually another question is rising from what Becky just said to not burden um, an employee's contract. And I'm curious, you may have just been saying it, Melissa, in the librarian's contract, is, is groundskeeper or clerk of the works included? And so that when the librarian director is there, she's in her contract performance? Is that correct? Because what leads me to ask this question, um, I'm trying to figure out, are we going to be extra paying someone to oversee this project? Um, Melissa, you want me to answer that? Go ahead. Yeah. Okay. Uh, no, Marianne, as our library director does not have a contract. Um, Mary Ann has taken on an immense amount of additional tasks um, that have been required by this building project at no additional compensation. Okay, um, uh, I see Jill Moreland's hand as well. So I'd like to move on to Jill. Uh, Mary Lou, if you have any other questions, do, do um, email us so we can, or if anyone has questions, email us so we know what kind of thoughts we need. Yep. Thank you, Melissa. Hi, Jill here. Melissa, this, this question is uh, to you. Um, uh, the point number five, that you said something very similar to um, that it's why, why it's needed. Unfortunately, it's needed. It's needed, unfortunately, number five. Um, did it just leave the screen? Oh, I'm sorry. That's me popping around on my agenda. I'm sorry. I forgot I was sharing. There you go. Yeah. Number five, Melissa, you said, mm -hmm. unfortunately, it's needed. Uh, could you just tell me what you were there, referring to? Um, it, it was brought out of, a, of a, a particular incident that happened at the location. And that's all I can say about that. Well, I could say something about it because I saw a video about it. And I, I, just, want, I, I just want, I just need to point out I'm not going to any, not gonna mention any names. An open forum. I'm not going to mention any names, but it wasn't a, a resident uh, or citizen of Shootsbury who was in somebody's personal space, arguing, shouting, distracting. Where a police those are my, there. I added those in as, as extra things so we're yeah, going to well, stop sure the conversation right sure now because i'm not on. comfortable with the open it would be helpful jill if you would listen to the chair of the the co-chair of the yes. select board i'm not comfortable you. having this discussion in open forum and we're going to move on from this and i think um eric i think i'll do some of these edits and then bring back another addition to our um another reiteration draft with these edits in it um and then Rita can either put on the next meeting or whenever she thinks fits. That sounds good. Thank you. Thank you, Jill. Um, okay, uh, Kristen, I think you're up next. I can't see my agenda now. There we go. Go for it, Kristen. Are you uh, there? Oh, yes, Update I'm here. Okay. 
<laughs> okay, well, um, I think the, the reason I'm up next uh, is because the select board received uh, an email from a resident who was unhappy with the program that I sponsored for our youth in the community. So I'll start with what the program was. Um, okay. I um, have been working diligently on creating community policing initiatives um, in response to the huge number of residents through our police study group that requested more community policing involvement in town. Um, one of those things, this is the second year that I have done the Sand for Seniors, for example. Um, I interact with the adult population of shoots very much more than I interact with the youth. The time that I have with the youth is when I go to the Shootsbury Elementary School. And that isn't really a um, great, uh, how do I wanna say this? It, it's not the perfect interaction time because it's during their school and educational hours where they can't really sit down and chat with us and ask us questions and get to know us on a personal level because it is during their educational time. They get sort of snippets of us throughout the day as we stop in and high five them and things. So um, over a, a few months, I was speaking to um, Bobby Brown and Joan Green, our local uh, phenomenal artists here in Shootsbury about some ideas that I had in regards to working with the youth. Um, I'm sure that many of you know that there was uh, an issue with uh, illegal graffiti that being graffiti done on public and private property without the permission of the public or uh, owners of the of the uh, of the property or um, permission from private property owners. So uh, so basically some issues with that. Um, I saw that as an opportunity to uh, engage our youth and. You know, I looked at it from an outside the box sort of perspective, which I tend to try and keep myself uh, in that space of outside the box. And I thought this would be a wonderful opportunity to give the youth what they are asking for by not using their their words, but by showing me their actions. Um, you know, and, and I saw an opportunity to bring art to the youth. So, you know, although the graffiti that we experienced throughout the community and has since been removed and, and fixed uh, and remediated, um, although that was, um, you know, terrible and it was some destruction, it still was art, even though done illegally. I thought, wow, what better way than to bring art to the youth and show them how to do this in a productive and purposeful manner. Um, so with lengthy conversations with uh, Bobby and Joan, we, they volunteered their time to give an art class. Now, the art class was about graffiti, and uh, Bobby and Joan are here. So I, Bobby did some research and found that um, the art, the actual art of graffiti, um, was uh, made very popular by a certain artist he can speak to more. And, um, and we decided to offer this art class to the youth. Now I had a great number of um, interest calls and interest emails uh, to this exciting program. We decided that we would um, utilize, um, and stop me Bobby if I say anything wrong here, but we were able to um, get spray paint that is water-based, so no fumes and things like that. And um, Bobby donated um, the wood to do the art on. I brought in um, drop cloths and things like that. We were very excited. This would be a great conduit to not only get to know our youth, but to sort of, you know, change their direction, change the direction of, of what they were thinking and where they were going and say, we, we wanna see you do this the right way and, and maybe put on an art show. So um, we put the information out there. Again, I said that I had a lot of interest. I probably had 10 to 12 phone calls and emails. Um, I was very sad to find out 
the next day that I was in after the art class that only two participants had showed up, shown up. And, um, and that was because uh, I received a couple of phone calls from parents telling me that they had heard that a certain resident in town was going around and speaking that graffiti is illegal and the police department should not be encouraging or sponsoring anything that's illegal. Now, according to Webster's Dictionary, uh, it does say that graffiti is an illegal activity. And thank goodness that we don't follow the laws of Webster Dictionary. Because if I did, if I ever caught any one of you doodling, I might just have to arrest you. Um, I, I then tried to talk to the parents explaining they wanted to remain anonymous uh, because they feel that this person would call them out and the word was bully. And, um, and I tried to explain to them that this is not an illegal activity. This is a artistic outlet. We are going to have an art show, um, all of the wonderful things. Um, and then I received uh, emails from the resident in town, which were CC'd to the select board and the town administrator requesting that the select board look into the appropriateness of uh, the police department taking part and sponsoring the activity. In fact, we were told that the by this party that stand for seniors is fine because it speaks to public safety and things of that nature, but he did not want his tax dollars going to this program. Um, if I may, I, I don't mean to be long-winded in this, but I'm very passionate about trying to interact with everyone in our community and even outside of our community. I think it's very important that I interact with the adults as we've stated before many times in this forum to create a atmosphere of mutual trust um, so that the community trusts us. We trust the community. We know what's happening. We know what's going on. I know so many of you now individually. I know your dogs. I know your children. I know uh, what lights you tell me you're going to leave on when you leave your home for the evening. And I'm very grateful for that, but I don't have a lot of interaction with the youth. And I refuse to have my interactions be, uh, you know, placed on a foundation of first mistrust. So I'm trying to turn that and change that and get to know our youth in a much more positive, you know, arena. You know, uh, according to youth.gov, 30% of all youth that are detained um, have, have uh, had property offense on their records, 30%. And, and I believe if we really looked into that, it's going to be things of this nature. Why not take something that's happening in a negative and create a positive? I don't believe in immediately turning around on our youth and charging them with offenses when we have a chance to actually make a difference in their lives, have them get to know us, have them get to know their own community better. I think, you know, uh, one time, uh, if I may, Susie, uh, Susie Mosier, if she's still on here, uh, you know, one time Susie and I were speaking and Susie was explaining to me the, uh, how purposeful it is to have uh, the youth be involved with their whole community and, and, and be able to have interaction and be able to be held accountable with their own community. And, you know, really that stuck with me. And I think it's important for not just us to know the community, but our, our members of the community, our elders of the community. It's a cross-generational gap that we have. We were doing multiple things here with this art class that got put on halt. You know, we were getting to have the police department interact. We were getting to have artists interact. We were sort of closing the generational gap. And it, it, it was exciting. Um, I think it's a shame that we are now currently, you know, on a halt uh, as we wait to um, have the select board um, review the appropriateness uh, of this. Um, I just want to create mutual trust um, with the community, especially with our youth. The middle age, uh, the middle uh, grades 
you know, the teenagers, they're very vulnerable uh, at this age. You know, our youngsters in our elementary school are much easy to sort of corral in the direction we want them to go. As they get into high school, maybe they're more focused on, you know, their future. The middle school, they're still trying to figure things out, who they are, who they want to be, how they want to represent themselves. And what better way to say, hi, over here, we care about what that is for you. And we wanna show you your options. So uh, in, in any case, um, <laughs> with everything I always say, transparency is extremely important to me for all of you. Um, and I would be remiss if we did not sit here and explain and, and explain ourselves. Uh, I apologize for any possible confusion um, that maybe uh, was represented uh, by just saying graffiti class. I did explain myself in those emails. Uh, as you saw, uh, Becky and Select Board, um, I explained myself at, at every email I got. I think there were a few of them, three or four from the same party. Every time I responded, every time I tried to explain, and at the end, I think that you were told that um, you got that this person got nowhere with me. And I think what really was meant was I didn't yield to their wishes because I stand very strongly and firmly in my belief that this is a good program that's only the beginning. And I'm so grateful to our community for wanting to offer their time, which is invaluable. Thank you, Bobby and Joan, invaluable. Um, Christine uh, volunteered her time to be there to, uh, you know, just kind of keep an eye on, on some things. Um, you know, uh, I just, I'm just hopeful that everyone is sort of understanding this is really just the start. I do want to do, create more experiences, not only with our adult community, but with our youth in a way that's positive, in a way that's going to have them remember something for a very long time. And I don't want that something to be a negative interaction. I want to introduce myself to them before I have to show up at their house and, you know, uh, in, in a negative manner. So um, with that being said, I'm not sure if Becky has anything to add or if anyone has any questions. Um, I know that uh, Bobby and Joan showed up um, mm -hmm. so that they can answer any questions as well. And, um, and basically I am looking for uh, support for my programs. And I'm also looking for the understanding that I am in this position of being the chief of police. And I do know what is legal and what is not legal and I would never ask the youth to partake in a project that is illegal. Um, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Kristen. I see, Christine, I see your hand for one second. I just have a question for Kristen. So, um, and Erica, maybe this is a question for you and I, is um, I think, I think you probably want us to give you a vote of support. Kristen, um, Eric, I think that's where, where this, this is uh, kind of the a culmination of having her come and explain and um, be able for these programs to go forward. Christine, I see your hand. So let me. I, um, I, I would like that, Melissa. Unfortunately, I don't see our residents on with us uh, this evening. Uh, but yes, that's what I, I would like um, okay. a, a vote. We can, uh, the select board can respond and let them know what we voted. Um, Christine. Hi, <clears throat> thank you for letting me share. First thing, I would like to thank all the members on the select board because you guys are tortured and you don't deserve it. The second thing, I'm sorry for folks whose only goal is to make our com the community thrive because they have goals and passions and there's people that are just oppositioners and I just don't understand why we have such beautiful projects and programs and people don't appreciate it. They're, you know, going against it. So I know that I appreciate everything in this town and all the people 
that are working to help our town to feel protected, feel like we're making connections with the people that we're living with and our police chief, our librarian and all the other people that are working and to help us, to invest in us individually, which ends up being a community. And I know working as a seventh grade science teacher, when I made connections with my kids, there was less problems. There was no, uh, no kids were stealing things or creating problems. So again, connection is the key. Yes. Art is a wonderful um, outlet. Mm -hmm. And I was at that program and it was nothing but wonderful, informative and such wonderful works that were done by these well-known artists. And I learned a lot about how they put the different tips on the ends of the uh, water-based um, spray paint and other types of medium that Bobby and Joan are absolutely the most wonderful artists I've ever seen in my life. They are so creative. They, know, they work really well with young people and adults. And I've never seen anybody in my whole life use simple pieces like paper in, in, in a, uh, just things that you would find around your house to make the most beautiful pieces of art. Thank you. You're welcome. And I think the select board also, um, well, since, since I've been on the select board, has always wanted a community policing uh, type department. So this certainly falls under that. Eric, do, um, I see one more hand. Mary Lou, is it a quick comment? Because we're getting away from our agenda slightly. I want to yes. be able to take a vote for Kristen. Okay, yes. Um, I want to say to Kristen, my son is a graffiti artist. He um, uses a pad and paper. He um, is, he, he, I gave him art lessons at the Banks community when he was a very young child. And I say kudos to your program and I, I thank you for it. Okay. Uh, one more, Susie. Go ahead, then we'll take a vote. I wanna say that um, the select board has chosen Kristen because she is a professional police chief and they trust her and they support her. And people trying to micromanage from the outside without enough information, they can have opinions, but they're uh, taking up time and energy when in fact the town survey showed that we want community policing. The select board chose a person who is dedicated to community policing and people without enough information are having opinions that are causing strife in this town and it's very tiresome and very wearing and not supportive. Becky, is it quick? Because I do want to take a vote. No, I, also have one. Okay. I, I had the opportunity to help um, put the, the artwork away and it was wonderful. And I can't wait to have the art show. And I have another question, Kristen, before we take a vote, would you do this another time? So um, another one? Absolutely. We wanted to make it more of a series, uh, didn't we, Bobby and Joan? We wanted to make it a little bit more of a series and then um, and then have an art show. We will be having to wait till after the new year, um, I believe. But with the um, select boards, um, you know, support and public support, we will be having another one. And as I said, this is just the beginning. We want to do other projects with art. And I had a lot of adults reach out and say, I, I want to do something like that. And I, and I think that's wonderful. You know, we, I, I appreciate art very much. Um, I, uh, I am not an artist uh, that I think, but I appreciate it. And I know my officers do as well. And it's not only a way for us to interact, but it's also a way for us to learn as well. Thank you, Kristen. Um, Eric, do I hear a motion to support Kristen and her? community policing our efforts with our youth and young residents and old. <laughs> so moved. Okay, um, I'll second that. Uh, all in favor? Stock or aye. Make peace, O'Neill, aye. Thank you. Thank you, Joan. Thank you, Christine, for doing the event. Kristen, any of the officers that were there, thank you. Thank you, everyone. We're back on. <laughs> okay.
<laughs> um, updates, Becky, on lot 032 and our oh. request. Okay, so I will um, ask Marianne to speak to the, the latest updates on activity at lot 032. And um, then when it gets back to some numbers, I'll, I'll step back in. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so let's see, we, um, uh, so we completed the uh, UIC investigation and a report was filed and uh, we, and the town received a response from DEP and that is posted on the environmental reports page of the library's website, mnspear.org. There's a page called environmental reports if people are um, concerned, but they're or, or interested. Um, but the, um, the results were, um, were uh, negative. So, um, so there were no reportable releases involved with the um the floor drain of the garage um good. and uh, so that's good um we um we don't have the report yet but when fuss and o'neill installed so they 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 did soil borings and installed one monitoring well back in the vicinity of the former air force radio tower um none of the soil borings showed reportable levels of gasoline, but the groundwater had reportable levels of gasoline um, in the one monitoring well. Um, so they um, recommend coming back out and installing more monitoring wells in a perimeter around the existing well um, to just determine the um, scope of the um, of the release. Um, and um, so they've submitted a proposal for doing that and then for doing a tier classification submittal and a phase one initial site investigation report to the DEP. Um, and they're hoping to be able to do that, uh, that the additional groundwater testing um, so that that data can be included in that report, which is due January 28th. Um, okay. So um, that's one piece. Um, the ANRAD process, process is, go, is ongoing. Um, we are very hopeful that it's coming to an end. The, con, the hearing was continued to their next meeting. Um, the Conservation Commission has required that the wetland flags be surveyed. So we're working on having a survey done um, and then the and then Fuss and O'Neill will have to do calculations, additional calculations, and map and um, mapping and create a new report. Um, and hopefully that will result in an ORAD on that January 12th hearing. Um, and Fuss and O'Neill has submitted um, some of That's the AMRAP okay. work was included in previous proposals, and then that reporting is not included. Um, oh, in this next proposal, um, so um, so they've submitted a new proposal um, to cover that, and then additional meetings and consulting and um, uh, site visits. Um, so Becky, were you going to talk about the numbers, or did you want me to say what those what those? Why don't mean? you say what they are, and then I'll put up the ARPA um, okay. update. Okay. Okay. So, All righty. There's a request Ready. for ARPA funds. Okay, so one proposal is for $13,540, and that covers the additional site visits, meetings, um, additional consulting, and advising. Um, and that's on uh, sort of a time and materials budget, so as needed, it's 40 hours, um, and, um, and we, we may not get to 40 hours. Um, and then it also includes the additional work, the additional calculating and mapping for the um, the AMRAD process and the, the the additional site visits and the additional meetings, some of which is retroactive. It's work that they've already done. And then 
the installation of the monitoring wells and the testing of, so the installation of the monitoring wells it involves a geoprobe drill coming out and drilling and installing the wells, and then somebody coming out and prepping the wells on a different day, and then some, someone coming out and taking the water samples on a different a day after that, um, and then submitting that all to the lab. Um, and so that that proposal includes that all of that work, the installation of the wells, the the gathering of the samples and the lab work, um, and that it includes the submittal to DEP, which is required. So, um, and when we, you know, so when you, so we had a reportable release that was, that Becky reported to DEP last winter. Um, and so we are, you know, we're under a timeline with DEP and we're required to report to them. We were required to do follow-up testing and we're required to report to them and we're required to um, have an LSP advise us on appropriate next steps. And these are the steps that the LSP has advised. Okay, um, so my understanding is the total request for uh, Lotto 30 Two LSP work is forty thousand two hundred and ninety dollars. Um, can everyone, the select board, see the spreadsheet? I can't, but I. It's only because I have my screen adjusted. So give me one second. I'm just going to adjust okay. it. You can go. Go ahead. Okay. So, um, back in July. We initiated a discussion of how we're going to use our ARPA funding. Um, the first approved item out of the $525,000 was $300,000 for the elementary school asphalt roof repair, leaving us a balance of $225,000. Um, to date, we have uh, approved Seventy one thousand one. I'm sorry, forty one thousand one hundred and ten dollars. This is a running total. It's the thirty thousand plus eleven um, for lot of thirty two testing um, that has already the majority. I think Marianne has eighty dollars left, sixty dollars left at this point in time. Um, and is now making a request for $40,290. Um, let me just get that minus. So if we look down, we had um, three other smaller approved items. And now we are looking at a balance after we, um, if, if tonight the select board commits to spending another $40,290, there should be a balance of $94,300 of ARPA funds. Okay. Okay. All right. And you need us to um, to vote on that, I imagine, right, Becky? You yes. does say to vote on that. Yeah. Um, Eric, do you need more information or are you ready to make a motion? Oh, or? And I, I almost, uh, I apologize. I have to go back into the screen. I omitted an item. So the other issue that um, was raised um, by Rita was given the situation where um, funding for um, legal fees is already um, uh, halfway consumed and we have um, um, many new is legal issues this year. Um, she is recommending that we also transfer $10,000 of ARPA funds into the legal fund to help support uh, getting us um, through these projects. So the total request is $50,290. Thank you. And it would drop the balance to $84,300. Yeah, pop that in there. Um, Eric, are you able, ready to make a, a um, motion or yeah. do you want further information or? 
just one quick comment. I, I, my general sense is there's there's really no alternative. That is to say, um, we have to get these tests done to meet DEP uh, okay. regulations. So we we have to do it. <laughs> so I, I'm yeah, I, I don't like it, but why don't we have to do it? That's what I'd say. Yeah. Um, yep, we're Melissa? in. A yeah, I just wanted to um, bring up one other issue surrounding the legal line. I know um, there has been interest in what the fees are for the two new um, newly appointed town councils. Um, yep. So I'm going to start with our current, our regular, um, our Donna McNichols regular fee is $150 per hour. Um, the newly appointed CONCOM uh, attorney, Beth Goodman, is $315 an hour. And our newly appointed um, Greg McGregor is $480 an hour. Thank and you, I Becky. wanna, yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you, that's, that's helpful. Um, uh, going back, Eric, uh, Leslie, I see your hand. I think Eric and I are going to talk about this a little bit more and see where we are before we allow, unless Eric would like to allow just, a comment prior to that. Just a point of clarification, Becky, isn't that $480 an hour there? That's not all the attorneys. That's the head attorney in their organization. Correct. Is that correct? And that is the head attorney. And then they go down to, I think, a, um, I don't have the rates in front of me, but it goes down to like 300, 300 um, I'm sorry, I don't have it in front of me, Eric. So it's about 300 and then 200 for, um, for a junior attorney. But right. the, the full rate for McGregor is $600 an hour. He gives us a 20% discount. And then um, I just want to mention when we received our our first bill, um, there were there were a number of hours that were not you know that were part of the, you know time shared with the attorney, but he only charged for a fraction of those in the first invoice. Thank you. Um. Eric, are you at a point where you want to take a public yeah. comment or do you, okay. Yeah, right. public Leslie. comment's fine. Yeah. I mean, I'm okay. I'm ready to, to vote to whatever, whatever's, whatever's. Less, Leslie, and then we'll, then we'll vote or motion and vote. Leslie. Do you have a comment? No? Okay. Um, Eric, go. Do you have a motion? Uh, I'm sorry. Can you hear me oh. now? Yep. Yes. Okay. This is just a quick question. Uh, I'm, I'm looking at the spreadsheet, and you know the ten thousand dollar figure for legal for town budget is that the ten thousand dollars? Is that been set aside for McGregor and Company? No. W what no, does the ten thousand? It would go into the general uh, legal fund for upcoming legal expenses. So that 10,000 is just to bolster the current legal fund. Correct. For anticipated future expenses. Correct. McGregor and others. Correct. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, Eric, uh, do I hear a motion? Uh, you want two motions or one motion or how do you want to do it? I think two probably is the best way to do this because there are okay. two line items here and then they, they're they very specific, not okay. linked. So the CONCOM didn't get any money, did they? They had to go to the fucking... Uh... They can hear you. <laughs> Thank you, John. Um, okay. I, uh, I would move that we... Um, Approve forty thousand two hundred ninety dollars transfer from ARPA funds um, to fund the further work of Fuss and O'Neill. I will second that. Um, any further questions or discussion? Nope. Um, all in favor? Stop for aye. Make peace, O'Neill. Aye. And then for the ten thousand. 
Okay, I would I would uh, I would um, move that we move ten thousand dollars from our, from the ARPA funds to um, bolster the town's um, legal line on the town budget um, for this year. Okay, I'll second that. And any further discussion or questions? And can I? Uh, all in favor, sig signify by saying aye. Stalker aye. Make peace, O'Neill aye. Okay. Thank you, Becky, for sharing your screen. Um, Mary Lou, we're going to move on now. Um, so the next item on our agenda is the uh, updates, the PFAS update, which Becky used. PFAS update. Okay. Um, so I think at the last meeting, uh, we were planning to do testing um, for five households in town um, that have POETS, which are point of entry um, testing um, mechanisms that have been placed at two town buildings, highway and fire, and at three residences. Um, so that testing did take place. Um, we were told it'll be three weeks till we receive um, the results of those tests. Um, as we await the results of the tests, um, our new LSP has been reviewing our DEP uh, work that had been completed, which includes um, the data from not, you know, um, much, quite a bit of data from the UMass studies, as well as um, the work DEP did at the fire station. Um, they put in test wells at the fire station. They took soil samples, um, which is all very helpful because, and then they did testing um, within about a thousand feet of the fire station, all the way to Pelham Hill Road and well, all the way to Wilson Road and up to the town hall. Um, I think there were 25 residences were tested. Um, all this information is being utilized um, by the new LSP. Um, the starting point in LSP would usually do testing within 500 feet of a locus, uh, such as the fire station. Um, ours is even, what's been done is even larger. So they are going to review those uh, results and then determine what next steps, what testing they want to recommend. They're going to review uh, the POETS, the point of entry um, mechanisms. Uh, we did have some difficulty in doing the testing. Um, so we're having a couple of the units modified to make testing easier as we're going to have to do the testing um, quarterly this coming year. And so any time we can save will help, help save a little bit of money. Um, so we're working on those alterations as well as reviewing um, the status on the filters of the units that have been installed. One of the uh, units already has had the filters changed, um, but we need to go back through and check the filters in the other four. And um, then, at some point soon we'll uh, receive the proposal from the new LSP and uh, there will um, be more to report at the next meeting. Thank you very much. Um, assessor updates next. Okay. Um, You're on. Uh, <laughs> jumping in on that one. Um, I know it's not always a welcome thing, but um, the bills, um, the tax bills, are being sent out. Um, unfortunately, it's right before Christmas, and but we are very grateful to have the bills um, completed. It's been um, without having a head assessor, administrative assessor um, to manage all of the activity this fall. It's uh, been remarkable, the amount of support we have gotten uh, from David Burgess and the help and uh, we receive from our consultant, um, Roy Bishop has been tremendous. Um, the assessor's clerk has worked a tremendous amount of overtime and we're ever so grateful 
um, that she had the time to do that, to help hold the office together. Um, and so that the success is getting the bills out, um, personal property and real estate all reconciled and out the door so that um, our town can stay on track. I think that's good news. <laughs> the tax bills, Definitely. but I'm glad, I'm glad we're still on track. I'm glad we're still on, yeah. on track. I'm sorry um, for Christmas. Yeah. Um, and then the next is the Board of Health Intermunicipal Agreement with Irving and Northfield. Okay, so I know, I know Catherine promised to be here. Is she not? I'm here. I am here. Oh, there she is. There she is, Catherine. I'm going to change the name on there for you, so we all know where who you are. Just going to. Oh, I'm sorry. It. What does That's it good. say? What does it say now? Yeah, the meeting host. The meeting host. Oh, how nice. <laughs> now, Catherine. Who knew? <laughs> right. Pay no attention to the woman behind the curtain. <laughs> so, can I answer your questions about the what's happening with the district, or do you want me to start from the top and tell you what's going on? Yes, if you could do yes. that. Give us some summary. Okay. Um, we have been participating for many years in the Eastern County, Franklin County Health District, and we ran up against a problem more than a year ago, and that was we discovered that our health agent did not have any benefits of any kind. She didn't have any health insurance. She didn't have any liability insurance. And the, there were historical reasons for that that had to do with our previous health agents, all of whom came to us with health insurance from other, other sources. So we have been uh, working away, primarily it's been Brian Smith, the um, town administrator from Irving has been working on a way to, um, to allow us to meet our responsibilities to our health agent. And the, the, the uh, plan is to have her become um, an employee of Irving and to have uh, the memorandum that I distributed to, you, to the, the select board um, uh, that would um, basically reestablish the same relationship that we had with the district with the town of Irving. So they would be the host community and um, Claudia would be their employee and we would pay our district assessment, what has been our district district assessment directly to Irving. And um, I believe the setup is it's going to be a revolving fund. It's not going to be mixed in with the Irving um, budget in any way. Uh, it's going to be a separate thing. And basically, everything is going to be the same, except that um, we'll have liability coverage for the for district activities and um, and Claudia will have health benefits. So that's the story. Is there anything I can answer? This presumably costs money, right? I mean, to get give someone health benefits that didn't get them before. Is it that, is, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not speaking against it. I'm just asking. If yes, it true. is. Our assessment is definitely going to go up um, in order to, to cover this. It, we probably won't feel it very much for the first year because for some reason there's a surplus in the district budget, probably because of COVID and, and um, you know, reduced, reduced activity. But we are going to see an increase, and I have no idea yet what that's going to amount to. But in, a, in any way, whatever way we found to, um, to extend benefits to Claudia, it was going to cost us. Yeah, I, I think it's between three and five thousand dollars increase, five to six maybe at most between okay. the towns. Is that divided between the towns back here? Is that just our assessment part? That would be uh, our piece if it's um, if the total cost with all the taxes and I guess we're already paying that. So, but I, it should not be. I don't believe it's going to be more than about five thousand dollars, but. We'll, we'll find out very soon. We have to. We'll, 
we'll know soon because we're we're kind of rushing on this so that we can start Claudia as an employee of Irving on January 1st. And it's a legal obligation. Um, we're lucky that. Um, right, Donna had a fit when she came to our meeting and found out that that um, uh, Claudia wasn't covered in any way. Yeah. And largely the reason she wasn't covered is we didn't know. You know, we've never had this before. And I mean, it was a failure on our part to, to um, you know, not find out. But since since time immemorial, we have not had to deal with um, with health insurance. We just didn't think of it. And she didn't ask. She didn't mention it. So it didn't come up until she got sick. Is there any reason she wouldn't just be on the, our health plan like any other town employee? Or is that... Is that a stupid question? Basically, basically, it was a matter of having one of the one of the towns take her on as an employee and cover her, and um, an Irving that has a, a somewhat bigger administrative um, footprint. They offered to take it. Right? It's it's you know it was kind of six of one, half a dozen of the other. Um, Eric, do you have any more questions? Or are you ready to make? No, no. I think I, um, I'm not quite sure what the motion would be. I guess to uh, to accept the inter to accept the inter inter municipal uh, agreement with Irving and Northfield for the Board of Health um, for the Board of Health. Right, and we'll need you, we'll need a signature from you on that. Okay, um, um, I'll second Eric? that. Go ahead. Wait, what? If it, we can, Melissa, we'll need both of your signatures uh, with Rita. If we can, I guess you could sign as vice chair. I'm sorry, Melissa. If you okay. could uh, in the in the morning, that would be wonderful. Yeah, I, I I can swing. I can swing up in the morning. It'll be before anybody else is up and and such. But okay. um, just okay. leave it in my box. I think. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Um, okay. Uh, any more questions or discussion, Eric? No. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Stalker or aye. Make peace, O'Neill, aye. Thank you, Kat. Thank you both very much. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Um, right. Now we have the recycling committee appointment. And there's Barbara Bigelow. Hi, Barbara. And this is Barbara. You are looking to become uh, on the recycling uh, recycling committee, correct? Do you want to um, give us just a little introduce yourself just for a moment? Oh, you're muted. Turn your oh, mute. I thought off. I just did. I thought I just unmuted. Yeah, no, you're, you're good, good now. You're good. You're oh, good. okay. Um, I will just say what I said at the committee. The reason I initially wanted to be on the committee. Uh, is fairly prosaic. I wanted to hand out garbage bags. It seemed like a really wonderful way to get to know people in town and to connect with people. Then when I went to the meeting, I now have another reason for wanting to be on it. It's an incredibly well run meeting. The rapport among the people on the committee was extraordinary. And the issues that they're dealing with or that committee deals with have an impact on all of us um, on a weekly basis. Um, and in addition, I learned a lot, and that is a compelling reason for me to want to be on any committee, which is one, it's super well run, they're dealing with important issues, I get to hand out bags, and um, I learn, I'm learning a lot. Great. Okay. Um, Eric, do you have any further questions or anything? Do you have no, a motion no. to appoint Barbara? I, I, move, I move that we appoint Barbara Bigelow to be Bigelow. on the recycling committee. Okay, I will second that. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Stalker aye. Make peace, O'Neill, aye. Thank you for volunteering, Barbara. We appreciate it. Welcome and thank you so much. Good night. Good night. Good night. Uh, Becky, we're on to select board review of Bill Earmark uh, contract collection, contact collection form. Okay, so I just want the select board to know that I got an email from um, the state Senate, um, Jared, who works in Joe Comerford's office and sent in 
um, a contact sheet that lists um, my name and the executive um, officer who would sign off on a contract, which is Rita Farrell as chair of the committee, um, as the first step in receiving $200,000 um, that this that we intend to put towards the roof of the elementary school, the asphalt section. Um, it's good to have a little bit of good news in between everything else going on. So I just wanted you aware that the first step has taken place. Uh, they promised six, within 16 to 18 weeks, we might have our money. So. Well, I think we, it's might, we might have our money. <laughs> <laughs> All right. It's at least a shimmer of good news. Yeah, All right. <laughs> Right? Yes, it is. Um, do you need a vote or anything of that, Becky, or just no, letting I us don't. know? I just like, oh, darn. <laughs> <laughs> I know. You want to vote on something. Right? So there's nothing we need to do with that then? Nope. Just to have an update. Okay. Yeah. Um, town administrator updates. You already did the PVTA and the FERTA. Yeah. And those FRTA, are the. Sorry. The biggest ones of the week. Um, we got through another storm without too many breakdowns um, in the highway department. Um, things are going pretty well in town hall, I think. Um, and for tonight, that's all I have. That's cool. Okay. That's good. Um, I think we're at the end. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay nice I, nice work nice work melissa <laughs> well i don't know about that but thank you eric oh, yeah. um <laughs> um i think thank you all for coming and sticking out too for our visitors still i appreciate that um all right i think we can adjourn do i hear a motion to adjourn so moved okay um i'll second that all in favor signify Stalker you <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you all. Have a good holiday Thank season. You all. Yeah. Take Thank a you break. Everyone. Good night. <laughs> good night. Night. <laughs>